Hi friends, Craig from the Barefoot Forge and today we're talking about this thing. I just bought it. It's a Hobart Air Force 12 CI. It's a plasma cutter. This cuts holes in things and we're going to poke some holes in it using electricity. Let's unbox it, let's take a look, let's talk about it and let's make some damage. Let's start by talking about what it is. Oh, if we turn it to this side, it's no longer in Spanish. Look at that. This is a plasma cutter. It uses superheated gas from the air and some electricity to make uh, a solid, well not solid, but a, uh, a beam of plasma which cuts through metal. Uh, in natural conditions, uh, materials can exist in one of four states, solids, liquids, gases, and then plasma. Plasma is the one that you probably don't see every day or you exist in a very weird world. But the fine folks at Hobart figured out how to materialize plasma on command inside of this box full of magic and squirt it out a little bit of a hose so that you can just, you know, zippity zap, cut your way through some things. It's pretty cool. Um, I went with this model particularly because even though it's not as strong and capable as some others, it's 110 volt and it has a built-in air compressor. That's really big for me. I don't like hauling air around. When I do go somewhere that I need to cut something, it's usually less than a quarter inch or I don't want to do it anyway. This will handle that. It's 110 volts so I can plug it into any outlet and I don't have, I mean I actually do have two great air compressors here at the shop. but. Uh, a lot of the other plasma cutters require a pretty stable air supply and I just hate firing up an air compressor. I hate the sound it makes. It just, it annoys me. So this thing is a fully self-contained unit. It's a little plasma gun and we're going to play with it today. I'm pretty excited. Pretty good. This smells deeply of peppermint and petroleum products. Yeah, it's got a unique odor to it. That's that good quality Hobart smell. Let's see what else we got in here. So this little unit's all that was inside. It's pretty slick. It's got a nice heavy duty, uh, heavy duty cord for this. It's got a uh, relatively thin gauge, very, very flexible, very, very portable ground strap. I'm a little surprised by how thin that is, but I'm sure it's okay. And then we've got our, you know, the business end of things. It's got this safety trigger does something like that. I have used one of these units before. It was a buddy of mine's, a little older, and it wasn't quite as nice. This definitely feels nicer, very ergonomic, and uh, really excited to use it. The unit as a whole is way smaller than I uh, even remember. It's been about two years since I've used his, but it, it sure is small. That's pretty sweet. It um, It's yeah. portable. I mean, it doesn't weigh much at all probably 10, 12 pounds. It can't be much more user friendly than this. There's exactly no settings. You just turn this switch to on once it's plugged in. You ground this to the ground thing, you plug the other end in, and you do something involving this safety trigger and then it, the fire comes out. It's gonna be great. Now, in reading all of the delightful warnings on here, there are some good ones. To me. Uh, fumes can be hazardous. Keep your head out of the fumes. Ventilate area, use a breathing device. Like a scuba tank, I'm suggesting, is what they're going to go with. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Don't die, don't die. This is my favorite one. Do not cut directly through your hands with a plasma cutter. Find sparks, um, watch for fire, keep an extinguisher nearby. Absolutely, and whenever you do anything with plasma or welding, you want to have a fire watch. So basically that just means when you're done with what you're doing, crack a beverage and stick around for the length of time it takes you to drink that beverage. Just make sure something doesn't, isn't smoldering and catches on fire later. Um, it's recommending for general use, probably shade six or shade eight. Uh, so we can just use our welding helmet for that and set it. That's good to know. Uh, follow the owner's manual. Only qualified persons are to install, operate, and service this device. I'm about to become qualified because I bought it. Keep away from children. And then check contents of the box. It has contents. The box contains contents. Um, pacemaker wearers keep away. That's fascinating. Uh, allow work and equipment to cool. I don't know what it does to pacemakers, but... Um, Apparently it kills you. Go that way. So if your prongs are, if you got two prongs and not three prongs, you got yourself a problem. If you got two prongs without that little dude, if it doesn't look like it's winking at you, you want this Lego face, not the other Lego face. 
This is your retaining cup, whatever that means. Yeah, look at that, you take that off. This is your tip, that's a wear item, right? You buy some more of those probably. This is your electrode, that's probably a wear item. It came with a spare tip, a spare electrode, and this uh, standoff guide. This, let's, let's poke things with this. Let's, let's make plasma. Well, we gotta put the little doodad on there. Let's see if, uh, I'm guessing it just kinda, you give it a, mm, yep, that's all you do. Maybe that's backwards. I don't know. That's a good direction, we're gonna go with it. Let's give it the full send. This is about eighth inch steel. It's like inch and a quarter, inch and a half wide. Let's clamp this down to the weld table and let's cut it up. So first we gotta get ourselves a clampy thing. Let's just head over here to our wall of clampy things. This is our wall control panel, love those guys. And we'll go with one of these armor tools clampy things. I love these things because they fit in the table and they do clampy things, but they also self adjust. I don't know how they do this wizardry, but it's just correct always. So you can turn this screw, but like never do that. It'll be fine. Put it in a hole here, put it in the hole. Give it some clamp lights clamped. Important. And then we're gonna just, we'll make a cut right out here. I don't know why, but that's a good spot. For today's helmet, we're using the $50 Amazon one that my students love. Uh, I'll have the link down below for this, but we buy a lot of these. This is really some pretty impressive technology for the cost. I set it to shade eight. That should be good. Maybe it's a hair dark. Maybe we could do shade six, but I like to keep my eyeballs working right. Ooh. In terms of safety gear, I also got some of these split cowhide gloves. These are, uh, you know, the low quality versions with the cotton on the inside. They're real cheap. They're made from uh, taking one entire cowhide and thinking, what if we could make it into two cowhides? So they're half of a cowhide. And I've also got on my, my safety boots. Uh, I took my safety sandals off because this, you know, sprays hot metal. So in this case, I got my boots on. Ooh, well green light came on. It makes no sounds, that's very weird. Okay, didn't work, gotta push this trigger up I guess. Wow, that was pretty awesome. It cut, I, I didn't even think it pierced through there at first, but no, it just, it sliced through that like butter. So anyone who says it can't cut more than eighth inch is just incorrect because it simply doesn't care that eighth inch exists. Uh, that was fantastic. We should do that again. first three cuts I made, I learned that the trigger switch, you gotta flip the thing up, and then it just, it just is great. It is plenty powerful for eighth inch. I think it, we should try some thicker stuff, but man, it just flies right through it. Nice clean cut, no air compressor. It, you know, this makes a little bit of noise, and then it does post flow for a little while, which is annoying if you're filming a video, but otherwise quite great. And just the idea that I didn't just spray angle grinder dust everywhere. And uh, yeah, this is pretty sweet. I okay, like so here is a piece of 3 16 inch. This is about two inches long. This should more or less max the machine, but at the same time, I really don't cut anything thicker than this. I just, I just don't. That's, that's a substantial piece of structural steel. <laughs> So it cut it nice and clean all the way through. It didn't hesitate at all. Honestly, I could have moved it faster. I'm just not used to where to put my face yet so I can see where I've, when I've cut all the way through. I mean, that cut faster and cleaner than an angle grinder. And
Fine. We should see how fast we can go before we start breaking up our puddle. Like at the end there, I had to break it off, but that's just because I didn't, I'm not used to it yet. I don't know to go past it. So uh, let's do it again. Let's try it one more time. I'm gonna try to move at a more even rate. And this time I'm gonna draw something on here with a Sharpie, with a curve, and we're gonna cut that curve. That's something you couldn't easily do with an angle grinder. Here. Let's make a curve that goes like that. Let's cut that. That's gonna be a tricky thing. I don't know how I would do that without a plasma cutter. So the problem we came up with, it had no problem piercing it, but I couldn't see that line at all. Maybe my helmet's a little too dark. So we're gonna go over that with one of these uh, these crayon pencil things. Um, these are the Markall Silver Streak welding pencils. And these are pretty sweet. They leave uh, a gray. Oh, they come pretty sharpened. That's great. I don't even have to bust out the belt grinder. So let's, uh, let's just trace this a little bit like that. Oh yeah, I'll be able to see that for sure. Okay, I moved a little too fast and we've just got slag on the bottom holding it in. If I would have just moved slower, we would have had a cleaner cut. So, you know, we are finding the capabilities of the machine. Let's just go back through that and it's gonna fall right off. I just need to learn to go a little slower, but overall very very impressed I don't know how I would otherwise make that shape and this is 3 16 steel It cut it like butter if I just learn the rate I'm supposed to move this is not in any way a limitation So I have used this machine my buddy's version of it before to cut quarter inch um, I had to pierce a, a floor basically that was made of steel um, to put some air lines down and it had no problem. We just had to move real slow. Uh, it certainly is capable of a constant rate of movement on 3 16 and everything thinner is just butter. So let's see what we can do with this. Let's put it to use. I'm gonna show you what I got it for. Went up. This right here is one of the most useful tools in the shop, uh, especially for blacksmithing. This is a brewery keg that has the top cut out of it to store water in as a quench bucket. This is nice. A few things before we use the plasma cutter. It's really important to know that this uh, isn't pressurized and uh, isn't sealed. So this one, for instance, which still has the spear in it, this would be dangerous to start with the plasma cutter. In theory, I would want to drill a hole in this first. If I just drill a hole and then treat it like it's a plasma operated scroll saw and just go from that hole, totally fine. This, on the other hand, we've got the spear out, plenty of ventilation. We can it doesn't look like I need to build any kind of special fixture because if I just ride this along that, if I try to keep this level and I go all the way around, I should get a real nice even, as long as I keep this parallel to the outside. So I'm gonna have to move my body with it, but that should give me a nice cut. And give it some clamp elations, put it over here. And then use our safety trigger, pull that up and send it. Hey, it took a few tries because I suck at making circles, but um, would you look at that? That's pretty good. So now all I gotta do is go through with a little baby grinder and just, you know, pretty that corner and she's done So That's a very nice quench bucket. That'll do. I really like plasma cutting. 
This is really fun. Well, that was really fun. I'm really excited about this new tool and I think it's gonna be a great asset to the shop. I think I needed this for a long time and I think maybe you do too. The 110 volt capabilities of this and the self-contained nature of it make it a really versatile, portable and useful tool for average hobbyist or home user. I'm really excited to do some auto body work with it. I'm really excited to use it around the shop for just chopping up little things and maybe making some designs and some sheet because I can just trace it out and, right? Really pumped about these new capabilities that I'll have here in the shop. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, quick things. You know what's up, but I really do read the comments. I will respond. It matters to me. You matter to me. Cheers.